Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Silent Hill podcast. Now the next monster that's encountered within the Silent Hill game shortly after visiting um, the Twin Feelers is quite possibly the most alien-like creature within the Silent Hill game yet. All the other monsters that have appeared thus far, they seem to have at least some kind of close resemblance to one another um, in terms of them either looking like an insect or them, uh, I guess, representing real life animals like dogs or even children in some cases this time though this one is by far the most alien it bears close resemblance to something but at the same time it is way different with it um, and this seems like almost like a monster that would appear in half-life rather than something involving Silent Hill you know what I'm talking about is the entity the creature known as the hanged scratcher which you'll see a picture of here grotesque looking thing isn't it I mean this is by far something that should appear within let's say your average sci-fi horror film uh, probably something within the latest Riddick movie, not something involving Silent Hill. This creature is encountered with deep within the sewers, so it's shortly after visiting uh, the, the Twin Feelers that you come across this creature. And this one, what makes it very unique are several things. First off, when you're in the sewers, uh, I noticed this after a couple of minutes, um, every time uh, you approach the creature, there was no more of this... Uh, radio static no more of this notation of hey you know there's something coming up soon here's a little buzz sound to let you know no you don't hear anything like that and it took me a while to figure it out and then I realized of course you know he's in the sewers and the makers of Silent Hill wanted to make it as realistic as possible at least as you can when you're dealing with the world of Silent Hill and so they decided to make when you're deep on the ground in the sewers obviously there won't be any radio transmissions going on because of all the interference and so making that real realistic means whenever you approach a monster or a monster approaches you there's nothing that you absolutely have no warning at all and this is the first circumstance where it occurred with this creature called the hanging scratcher and it appeared out of nowhere I mean it caught this guy by surprise almost as I did when you were walking in the sewers and then you heard this distinct clicking noise and that's very very unique it's only attributed to this monster it's a clicking noise it almost sounds like like as if somebody like a creature that had I guess high heels and it was clicking on the ground or on the floor almost like tap shoes it distinctly reminded me of if you've ever seen the movie um, Alien 3 there's several scenes in it where the creature whenever it goes to and from certain places in that prison it creates a distinct clicking no uh, noise as well and I wonder if they played a tribute to the creature because this one, the hang scratcher, the way it moves, the way it acts, it does bear resemblance to the dog-like alien within Alien 3. So the next thing you notice also is that this thing, it attacks either from the ceiling or from the ground itself. In this case, the dude I was watching, whenever he uh, first came across that clicking noise, this thing, this hanging scratcher, uh, scratcher happened to be on the ground. But then at another point, he was walking around, and because the flashlight only catches certain areas at a time, um, he wasn't pointing it to the ceiling. So obviously, there was no light hitting the ceiling. And then bam, all of a sudden, one of these things hit him or scratched him or did whatever it does with its long nails. And that's when it caught both of us by surprise. Very creepy. Great job by the Silent Hill makers to grab to have this thing come about not just from the ground but also from the top the third thing you'll notice is that these things attack in pairs or they attack in triplets and in some cases even more they are hardly ever by themselves there are no individual ones lurking around in the sewers unless you happen to trap one by itself so that makes these creatures very very dangerous in fact the way that these things attack and the way that they move, they have a great speed to them. They almost seem to be one of the most dangerous creatures yet encountered within Silent Hill. Very uh, dangerous creatures, especially when you get cornered by them and there's a multitude of them. There were several instances where this guy, the one I was watching, um, he came across certain areas and that's where they would appear. The most notable one is... Uh, they would appear as a pack and the most notable one is whenever he encountered a key it was by the edge of some I guess sewer grate of some sort and on the other edge was this blood red water whatever it was that constituted the sewer water and as he picked up the key there was a notable cutscene and then all of a sudden 
three of these things popped out out of nowhere. He was ambushed by them. And man, did they do massive damage to the guy. He had to, as playing as Harry, he had to just run the hell out of there. And that's the key thing to, to advise whenever you face this particular creature, especially if you see a pack of them. Run, run as fast as you can. Get to those gates that open, that say uh, keep closed or something along those lines. As long as you have that key, then you can go to and from those gates. And when you shut it behind you, then these things will not go through them. You'll encounter, of course, more on the other side of the door, but these hanging scratchers that you at least find a temporary retrieve. So what they're supposed to represent is, of course, um, Alessa's continued fear of insects, but by them being so alien-like, I mean, it, it's unique. I mean, these, the other creatures that I've talked about before, they all bear some reminiscence of something, obviously like moths or anything involving dogs or anything else involving uh, pterodons or anything else involving um, those cockroaches, those creepers. Um, this one, though, I don't know. I mean, what, is this, what does it look like? It doesn't look like any other insect that I can think of. The closest to me that it looks like is like a praying mantis, and that's only because of those folding arms on the front. It doesn't have the bulbous eyes that praying mantises have. Instead, it just looks like like a made-up dragon, I'm sorry, like a reptilian look dragon-looking thing that would look insect-like, it's just not on our world. So I don't know exactly what it's supposed to represent other than Alessa's continued fear of insects, but as far as like a real-life thing, I don't know. Uh, I, I can't really see it representing anything. Metaphorically, what it's supposed to represent is it's the idea of Again, the order, the cult, the whatever those followers were, and their continued attack on Alessa, their pursuits, how they come out of nowhere, how they attack in packs, how they ambush from other places, even by surprise, in this case from either the darkness or hanging from the ceiling. That's what they're supposed to represent, uh, the idea that these cult-like members just are relentless. Like, they'll go, they continue to go after Alessa from all areas and attacking as an ambush, you know, as a group, um, ambushing her, much like these creatures do to Harry. As far as beating these things, it's pretty easy to do so. Um, if you get them individually. If you have them individually, the way I saw this dude uh, shoot, I mean, it, all you need is about maybe four or five shots, and then that's it. The problem is, of course, finding them individually or forcing them to become individually once you encounter them as a pack. Um, so that becomes much more difficult. Um, he, was, uh, Whenever he had these individually, he was also able to do it with melee weapons. He took out the axe and a couple of swipes, and the hanging scratchers were done for. Um, I don't know. I didn't see anything as far as, like, attacking or beating one from hanging from the ceiling. Because um, um, he ran, he was running so fast, the guy that was playing, that um, either he, I didn't get to see these things, I guess, defeated while they were hanging from the ceiling, so I'm not sure what happens there. But as far as the ones on the ground, that's the way you beat them. Um, as far as them being encountered elsewhere, not that I know of. Um, again, this is another one of those creatures that uh, was a one-hit wonder. It just pretty much was in this one game only, the first Silent Hill, and that's it. And even then, it didn't even appear anywhere else. Um, none of the other play novels, none of the other digital games, mobile games, comics, of course, not the films, nothing at all. It didn't appear anywhere else at all. Probably because, again, of the weird alien-like uh, status of this creature. Again, it, it seems like it would be far more fitting in the world of Half-Life than Silent Hill. Maybe that's why, uh, presumably, it hasn't appeared in any other type of, of medium within the Silent Hill franchise. But yeah, that's the next creature, the Hanged Scratcher, by far the most alien-like creature yet encountered within Silent Hill. Alright, everybody. Thanks again, as always. Take care. Bye.